Okay. How much are you going to get here? Nine. Negative nine. Yeah. And we certainly have negative nine on that, for sure. Hey, is it still going to work if I have an equation that looks kind of backwards? Where I have a variable on the right hand side rather than the left hand side, is that okay? Yeah. Okay, it's still an equation, right? So we still have this line. I still have a variable. What's my variable? X. And what do I need to get rid of around the x? One. Yeah. How do I get rid of that plus one? Negative one. Okay, we're, we're subtracting, so I, I'd like if you said not negative one, minus, minus, minus one. Minus one. We are subtracting here. So minus one. If I subtract one from the right, I have to also subtract one from the left. On the right-hand side, here's what's going to happen. We've got a plus one, we've got a minus one. Plus one, minus one, that's going to give us zero. That's why we do that step. We're going to be left with x on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, again, we're using addition rules because we're adding or subtracting. What are we going to have? Very good. Yeah, add them together, keep the common sign. That's addition rule. Not every answer is negative nine, I promise. They change. Oh yeah, top ones are different. <laughs> Not every answer is either four or negative nine, okay? They change. You know, a lot of people are just fine on these ones. I do want to show you a couple more that sometimes get a little people, get people, not get, not get little people, just people a little confused. I said little people. <laughs> They're just fine on this. 2 equals 8 plus z. It's still an equation. What's our variable here? Z. People get a little confused on what to do here. How in the world, or what do we need to get rid of, and how do we do it? What do we need to get rid of here? The 8. Okay. Now, the 8's next to the z. It's a, is it a positive 8 or a negative 8? Positive. positive. Okay. How are we going to get rid of a positive 8 that's being added to z, or that z is being added to? That's going to work. If I subtract 8, that's great. That's exactly what we want. Positive 8 minus 8, that's going to be 0. As long as I do it to both sides, I'll be set. I'll be fine. On the right-hand side, I will certainly get... What's on the right-hand side? 0. So 0 plus z, we would get the 0, right? But then when we add z, we get our z. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to show me the 0 unless you want to. I mean, 8 minus 8, yeah, you're going to get 0. But we can just make sure we know that is z. On the left-hand side, how much are we going to get? Six. Great, that's fantastic. Begin using addition rules, different signs, subtraction, make a number. Certainly an equation. We'll put our line going right down the middle of that equal sign. What I need you to tell me is, firstly, what's our variable? X. Okay. And is there anything around x? Okay. So you see we have negative 3 plus x. The question is, how do I get rid of negative 3? Well, some people have this question, why aren't we subtracting 3? Because look at, I mean, should that be, isn't that a plus? Why aren't we subtracting the 3 over here? And the answer is, what you can do is you can subtract the negative 3. I want to show you this one time, I'll never show this again, but I want to show you one time. You can subtract the negative 3. So if you take away the negative 3, Subtract the negative 3. What's minusing a negative actually do for us? Positive. Do you remember going through that stuff? Yeah. Said, oh, okay. This, what, would this, what this would be, I'm going to write down here so you see it. This would be negative 3 plus x minus negative 3. That's negative 3 plus x plus 3. That plus 3 and that minus 3, those will be gone. That's what we're doing here. So instead of showing all this work, we can think of it as, okay, how do we get rid of, do you need that? Instead of showing all that work and saying, okay, we, we can subtract negative 3, if we understand that subtracting negative 3 is the same thing as adding 3, adding 3 to both sides will work for us. So really what we need to show on this problem, instead of subtracting negative 3, 
we think of it, okay, what's the opposite of negative three? We're gonna add three. Now you'll see the addition rules work, right? We have a minus three, or a negative three, and we have a plus three. Negative three plus three gives us zero, that gets rid of the three. On the left-hand side, we have x. On the right-hand side, how much do we have? Negative one. Negative one. And we're good. I'd like to give you a few to try on your own. I'll be walking around. If you do need some help, let me know. I'll be happy to help you. people leave some of sign and send this around again I don't remember your names yet. Um, just on the column next to your next to your name, this one, just put your name again, okay? Then we find out who left. Sign it again. again. These are equations, we're looking for the variable and just getting rid of the thing that's around that variable. Right now, these are all just single steppers. By the end of this class, we're going to have some very, very complicated uh, equations that we can work on. But it's not going to be a problem because we're just going to build up from what we know. Let's look at the first one. So we certainly have equations on all these examples. That's why we have those vertical lines under the equal sign, just keeping them balanced to show that we have that. On the left-hand side, we have our x, and we're trying to get rid of a minus 7. How do you get rid of that minus 7, everybody? Great, so that wasn't everybody, but whatever, I'll take it. So add seven, we do that to both sides, keeping that equal. On the left-hand side, we get x. That's why we do that step, is to get rid of that minus seven. On the right-hand side, we have two plus seven gives us how much? Nine. That's it. How about we got nine? Fantastic, did you check it in your head at least to make sure it works? Good for you, that's fantastic. Next one, our variable's on a different side, but this still works the same way. As long as we do the same thing to both sides of our equation, we're good to go. 
So here with our plus 13, what gets rid of our plus 13? So we're going to minus 13 on both sides. On the right-hand side, that gets rid of our 13s. We get T. On the left-hand side, we're using addition rule because we're adding subtracting. All we have to do is look at the signs, apply the addition rule. We see there's two different signs. We're going to add them together, keep the common sign, and hopefully you've got negative 28. Did you get negative 28? Here's something very similar. We subtract 14 from both sides. Yep, add because we have the same thing going on, the same sign. So we're going to add those together. How much? Are you guys starting to really get a handle on the addition rule? Good, I hope so. That's fantastic. Okay, next up. What do we do here? Subtract 15. So we're going to subtract on both sides, of course. Mm -hmm. Am I going to get zero? Good. Yeah. We don't let the, don't fall into that trap of just saying the same thing and giving zero. That really does need to be negative thirty. And lastly, we have negative seven equals negative eight plus x. What do we need to get rid of? Good. How do we get rid of that negative eight? Positive eight. Perfect. Again, you could think of it as subtracting negative 8 from both sides. You can get rid of it that way. But on the other hand, we can just say, OK, the opposite of negative 8 is positive 8. Let's go ahead and add that. Because when we know, when we add the opposite of a number, it goes to 0. So we add 8. We make sure we do that to both sides. We go addition rule over here. How much are we going to get? One. Oh, Be careful. positive. Yeah, because they're different signs. We'll subtract, but we keep the sign of the bigger number. And again, you can check your work on all these equations. How many people got at least three of them right? At least three. That means three or more. How many people got all five right? Good for you. That's fantastic. Very, very good job. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about today, remember I told you we're going to start building these things up and building them up. Is there ever a case where you have more than one variable in the same equation? Yes. All the time. <laughs> All the time. Now, what I'm, I'm not talking about two different variables like x and y. Okay, You get those in later classes. That's called a system of equations. You need two equations to solve for two variables. You need three equations to solve for three variables. Four equations. For, you see the pattern, right? So if you had five variables, you would need five equations to solve that. Use something called matrices to do that. It's pretty quick. Uh, but for, for us, we're going to stick with one type of variable, but maybe you see it more than one time. For instance, nine x equals eight x plus four. Are they both going to have the same answer, both x? Well, that's the whole idea, is that they need to, right? Because it's the same exact variable. So how in the world do you solve this if you have 9x equals 8x plus 4? How do you get that x by itself? Yeah. Um, subtract 4. That's the constant. That's good. We're going we're gonna to deal with the constant sooner or later. We're going to deal with it later, though. Yeah. Uh, we're going to deal with the variables first. We're going to deal with the variables first. I deal with the variables first. Here's the idea. Hope you're listening because uh, you've had some great ideas, but none of them have been right on the money yet. So I can see where we, we need this right now. 